Our second iron oxide mineral that we have in our mineral list is going to be magnetite. So um, very similar in chemical composition to our earlier iron oxide hematite, um, but magnetite definitely has a couple distinctive properties to it. So the first thing I think of when I see um, magnetite is the crystal form that it grows in. These octahedral forms here, little octahedron, look at it, so symmetrical. Um, this is really, really typical. This is not a particularly beautiful or good crystal of magnetite. It readily forms these octahedron shapes. Um, and you can see that these are definitely the crystal faces because we have those step patterns, the plateaus um, that we're used to seeing on crystal faces, so not perfectly shiny. Another thing to note is the luster. If we had like a really nice sample of this, it would be much more metallic looking, but this submetallic kind of, you can see where it's a little bit weathered and we have earthy bits. This is very typical of magnetite crystals. So um, submetallic to metallic luster with small bits that are oxidized and earthy, that's going to be um, really typical. And that in there, that red kind of brownish tint that's coming through, that's going to be iron oxide. This sample, even though it's a lot larger and doesn't have individual crystals, when we hold it up, we can still see those kind of octahedral triangle shaped forms popping through. If we have good, there's another tiny one. And so this is really typical, even in something like this that we would call massive, we can still find really good crystal forms. There's another one right there, another piece right there. So this is really typical of magnetite. And you can see the um, luster of this as well is a little bit variable, a little bit more earthy, a little bit more submetallic. Um, it just depends on whether or not you have a good crystal face. Now, the property about magnetite that almost everyone already knows is that it's very magnetic. So compared to what we had earlier, that ilmenite, I cannot shake this magnet off. It is on there for good until I pull it off. And it gives me a little bit of resistance as well, even just trying to pull it off. This one can just pick up the um, octahedron form because it's so magnetic. Um, and so anytime that you see any of these minerals or if you're in the field, the first thing you want to do is get out your magnet from your pocket and see how magnetic it is. It should be very magnetic. So we've got crystal form, luster, the magnetism, the hardness of it. So it is soft enough to give us a streak. So let's see if we can get a good, well, let's not use that one. Let's see if we can get a good streak. All right, so the streak we got, pretty typical for this group of minerals. It's a black streak, um, but it powdered really readily, very easily. And um, this might not necessarily be the most diagnostic thing, but it is soft enough to streak, so that can rule out other things that might be harder um, or something like graphite that was so easy. This is, you can hear it when you're streaking on the streak plate. So the hardness is at about a five to a 6.5. So let's see if I can get at it with this nail here. Give it a good scratch. So I'm trying to scratch it, but it looks like they're pretty evenly matched. Um, so that's pretty typical of this. If I tried to do it on glass, um, it should powderize a little bit, but we'll save the glass plates for things that are harder. Um, other than that, so it's isometric. It grows in these beautiful little forms here. It's an opaque mineral. That's very diagnostic of it. No matter how you slice this, the thinnest slice, will still, light will not go through it. Um, so the most diagnostic things about this, it's pretty dense. Um, it has a higher density. It forms these beautiful crystal faces um, and crystal shapes, and it's highly magnetic. And that's magnetite, our second iron oxide mineral.